In the last video, we set up an app server pointing to slash temp slash tutorial on the server's file system and served up a static file. In this tutorial, we'll see how to generate content using code, specifically xQuery and XSLT code. Now, in MarkLogic server, everything is driven by xQuery, so even if you want to write most of your application code in XSLT, you'll still need to do a little bit of xQuery. Let's start with xQuery's version of Hello World. We'll create an xQuery file in our app server, giving it the file name extension .xqy. That's how the server will know to interpret this file as an xQuery program. Then simply type hello world in quotes, which indicates a string literal, just as in XPath 2.0. Let's also concatenate the current date, just to prove to ourselves that we are in fact generating dynamic content. Next, to run this code, we simply make a GET request with our browser for the hello.xqy file. As you can see, the browser shows the string result of our xQuery expression. Now that we know how to invoke xQuery scripts, let's look at how to invoke XSLT. First, we'll create a simple XSLT style sheet. I've already prepared a simple one, so I'll just paste it into a new file called page.xsl. This style sheet will generate an HTML page that displays the current time. Now you might think that to execute this we would just point our browser to the file, as we did with the xQuery script, but in fact that would just serve up the XSLT like any other static file. Instead, we need to invoke the XSLT from within xQuery. Let's create a new xQuery file called transform.xqy. To call the XSLT, the only function we need to worry about is called xslt-invoke. This function is in one of MarkLogic's built-in extension function namespaces. For our convenience, MarkLogic's xQuery implementation pre-maps the xdmp prefix to this namespace. As you can see from the API docs, xslt-invoke takes four arguments. The first two are required, the second two are optional. For now, we'll just look at the required arguments. The first argument is the path of a style sheet to be executed. This is resolved against the root of the current app server. Since page.xsl is in the root directory of our app server, we need only type its name here. The second argument is the node to which the style sheet is applied. This will usually be a document node. In fact, to keep this really simple, we'll just create an empty document node in line using xQuery's document node constructor syntax. Now, if we invoke the xQuery file from our browser, we'll see the results of the XSLT style sheet being applied to an empty document. In the next video, we'll look at how to start working with actual data, the documents in our database.